your biggest breakthrough and today we will be talking about you know a very interesting topic and today we will try to answer questions okay number one what happened in the text in tagalog ano nangyari do sa binasa natin what happened on those times the second question is what happened in the text that i can learn from and apply it today is anybody here believing that the Word of God was breathed by God? And it is the same yesterday forever. The way God speaks on those times is the same God that we are worshiping right now. So our main text is on chapter 3 where Nehemiah and the people of Israel starting to rebuild and repair the wall. May nire-repair kasi may kailangang ayusin. Tama? Wala na masigurong inaayos na ayos. Ang bagay na inaayos ay yung mga bagay na hindi ayos. Check mo ulit yung katabi mo kung ayos ba yan. Alright, good. It looks like, it's, it looks like, alright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, and I think it's in our nature as human to repair things, to fix things. Okay? We may be different in our capacity, on what level we can repair, but we can repair. Small things or big things, the moment that we see broken things, we fix it. For example, bumili ka ng pants. Mahaba yung pants mo. Alright? And ang height mo is 5 flat. Alright? So, anong kailangan mong gawin? <laughs> no! Repair it, right? Dadali mo sa altered, right? Papagawa mo. How about, meron kang polo, and meron kang, or for example, may uniform ka, and tanggal yung botones. Anong gagawin mo? Repair. Kung halimbawa sa bahay ninyo, sira lababo nyo, sira yung faucet, anong gagawin? Repair. How about this? Sira yung cellphone. Anong gagawin? Repair. So it's naturally for us to repair. Tama ba? Because that would be crazy if you see things that's not, you know, okay, and you will not repair. In our home, when we see broken things, we repair it. Is anybody here na mahilig mag-repair? Usually mga dads to eh. Tama ba ako? Appliances, mga personal stuff sa bahay, yan. Puso, puso, yeah, yeah. We will repair, okay? Sino naman dito yung tipong ayos naman yung bagay, pero sisirain niya para may ma-repair lang siya? Sinong ganon? I think it's the ladies, right? No, just kidding. No, no. Wala yung asawa ko. Good. Just kidding. Yeah. Sino naman dito... Alam mo yun, yung inaayos mo lang yung mga bagay na gusto mo. Yung tipong, alam ba ko ganito, um, itong bagay nito, you have, sent, mayroong sentimental value siya, you really love this item, at kahit anong mangyari, you you will gonna make sure na ayos yun. Sino yung ganun? Na pag nakita mo right on the spot na sira siya, you will fix it. Pero sa ibang bagay, of course, alam mo yun, ah, you don't mind those things. And I remember one time, um, si Rita na mahilig maglaro ng computer games. Yeah, si Rigel, computer games, yeah. So there's one time, naglalaro ako ng computer games, and who would agree and relate to me, that one of the most annoying and frustrating na pwede mangyari sa'yo, is na sa kalagitnaan ka ng laro, na matay yung PC mo. Oh my God. That is disaster. You know? So what I did is, nung nasira yon, at the moment, kinuha ko yung CPU ko, and chinek ko. Diba? Sino nang nakakalinsure yung CPU? CPU. And marami mga parts yun, diba? May mga computer parts doon. So what I did is, I have to break it down. Kailangan ko siyang sirain ulit, tear it down, so that maayos ko siya. You know what sa life natin, sometimes, there are aspects in our lives that God needs to tear it up so that God can build you. 
hindi ka maayos o hindi tayo ma-repair -re kung hindi tayo dadaan sa proseso ng pag-tear up. So what I did is, what I did was, tinanggal ko lahat, chinek ko, and of course, siyempre, I tried everything. Nag-test ako, paano kaya kung linisin ko itong external drive? How about itong cable na to? Ilipat ko dito sa cable na to. Lahat ng anong binubugal ko, shh, ina, hinihipan ko na lahat. May halong, <laughs> may halong laway na yun. At the end of it, Sira! Sira pa rin siya. Pero I tried my best to fix it. Because this is what I know. We repair what we value. Kung importante sa atin yung bagay, we fix it. Pag mahalaga sa atin, inaayos natin. Pag mahal natin, inaayos natin. Mapabagay man yan, o mapatao, ministry man yan, o tahanan, we repair what we value. And you know what? Wala akong nakitang tao na pinabayaan lang yung mga bagay and how much more yung tao na mahalaga sa kanya and he or she will try his very best to repair or to fix that. Just like Nehemiah. You know what? Nung naarating sa kanya yung balita, sabi, niya, sabi sa kanya, Hey, Nehemiah, the walls of Jerusalem is in ruins. And you know what? Yung na automatic na narinig ni Nehemiah yon, sabi sa word, he felt sad. Pero meron pa doon sa ibang version, sabi doon, Nehemiah got sorrow in his heart. In Tagalog, si Nehemiah, correct me if I'm wrong, nagdadalamhati. Lalim, di ba? Tumatangis. I like it. Parang gusto yung version na yun, ah. <laughs> And it's a natural response to a person na malungkot at masaktan pag nakikita niya yung taong mahalaga sa kanya ay napapahamak. It's a natural response that he or she will give everything, including time and effort, para ma-make sure lang na maayos yung bagay na yun. Saan ka naman nakakita, di ba? Boyfriend and girlfriend. Nakita mo yung boyfriend mo. Nakita mo yung cellphone ng boyfriend mo. May kachat siya. Ang tawag nila, baby girl, baby boy. Saan ka nakakita na yung girlfriend, automatic nung nakita niya yun? Sinong makaka-relate sa akin? Of course, yung automatic response niya is, Hey, I want to talk to you. And we know that it will be a hard conversation. Because that's the process of repair. Kung minsan, masakit talaga ang pag-repair. Wala naman siguro dito na, nakabasa nyo na yun, is, yeah, it's right. Go ahead. Wala naman, di ba? Kasi kung ganun ang gagawin mo, it's just, it just shows that you don't value the person and you don't value the relationship. Kasi sino rito nakakaalam na pag ganun ang setup, wala na. Ang term nga ng generation ngayon, it's red flag. Naghihintay na lang ako ng blue flag, white flag. No, just, just kidding. Sino naman dito? Pumunta sa hospital. Kinausap si Doc. Doc, papacheck up ako. Mas feeling ko lumalaki na ako eh. Sabi ni Doc, okay, okay, we gonna sort it out. Okay? From now on, magda-diet na tayo. Okay? Every day, one rice. So, ano, every day, one rice. Kasi, very, malaki, obese, you know? One rice. So, ano ang natural response natin pag ganun? Of course, we will try our best na masunod yung instruction ni Doc. Tama ba? Yes. And after a month, bumalik ka kay Doc, sabi ni Doc, oh, ba't lumay ka lalo? Ang nangyari, instead na one rice, naging one rice cooker. Right? I don't think it's a natural response on that. How about this? Pumunta ka kay Doc. Doc, parang sakit ng dito ko sa may tiyan ko banda. Goiter dito? <laughs> no. I rebuke you, Jesus. Goiter dito. No. <laughs> Nagpacheck ka kay Doc. Masakit yung dito mo. Alright? And then tinanong ka ng mga history. Nag-smoke ka ba? Umiinom ka ba? Of course, umamin ka. Yes, Doc, umiinom ako. Okay, sabi ni Doc. Okay, from now on, Mi-minimize natin. 
Alright? One shot lang, ha? Shot lang. Shot lang. Kaso after the consultation, abang muwi ka, nakita mo yung mga friends mo, pare tagay. O, ano nangyari? Instead na shot, naging shot puno. Ayun. Mas, <laughs> mas naging malala. And you know what, what it shows? It shows that you don't value your health. At pag nagkasakit ka, you're gonna say, God, please help me. Please heal me. This is my biggest breakthrough to receive your healing. And God is looking down. It's like, what are you doing? Shut up. <laughs> Probably kakamot ng ulo si God. Okay? How about this? Finances. Anybody, you know, we are in the 52 days. We're believing for breakthrough, financial breakthrough. Anybody with me? Ako lang? And then we receive this salary. Oh, we're so happy. We pray for financial breakthrough. Pagkandang na sweldo, open kagad ng app. Shopee, Lazada, add to cart, add to cart, check out. Yon! Alright? Who's with me? Ayan. Alright? Hindi pa doon natatapos yun. Okay, tatawagan pa niya yung friend niya. Bro, sis, kain tayo. Ayun, in one week, nag-samgyup. Alright? Samgyup. Hindi pa natapos yun. Nag-shopping pa. And here's the thing. One week before the next sweldo, zero balance na. And guess what? Hindi pa nagtatights yan. Alright? I'm not saying that we don't enjoy and spend our money. It's our money. It's the, it's the fruit of our labor. And of course, it's our right to enjoy it. But what I'm saying is, spend it wisely. If you are praying for a breakthrough, build a good system and discipline on managing your finances. Because here's the thing, and why I'm sharing this all, all this, this to you. Kasi kung tayo nga, alam natin yung kahalagahan, alam natin yung function, alam natin yung pagkakadesign ng isang bagay, alam natin yung purpose and plan ng isang bagay, alam natin na pag hindi nagpa-function ng isang bagay, according sa purpose niyan, He will do our best to fix it. Same thing with God. The first step, that God will do in order for us to live according to His design, according to our function, according to our purpose, the first step is He will try His best. He will do His best to repair us. We are in the season of believing for breakthrough. And you know what? God needs to repair us to prepare us for breakthrough. God needs to repair us to prepare us for breakthrough. Because what is breakthrough if we are not ready for it? You are praying for a car. Hindi ka marunong mag-drive. What's worse, wala kang lisensya. You are praying to God, God, give me a job. But in every opportunity, in every interview, hindi ka naman nagpe-prepare. And nagtataka ka, ba't kaya hindi ako na-hire? Hindi ka nagpe-prepare na sa interview eh. Hindi ka nagre-review. You are, prepare, you are praying for growth sa ministry mo. And yet, you don't have this discipline to keep your relationship with God. You know what we have a saying here in the equippers? Significant ministry flows from significant relationship. If you are leading a group, if you're leading a team, if you're praying for growth, if you're praying for increase, you know what? And one thing na priority mo is to keep your relationship with God. You are praying. And yet, hindi na tayo man tayo nagde-devotion. Hindi naman tayo nagpe-pray. Some of us, we are praying for the right person. But we are not making an effort to be the right person first. Here it is. What is breakthrough? if we are not a good steward of it? What is breakthrough if we are not responsible for it? And you know what? Kung ano yung minsan na inuuna ni God na i-repair sa atin? Ready? Kung ano yung unang finifix sa atin? Come on, tinan mo yung katabi mo ako nakikinig? 
Alam mo kung ano unang finifix niya? The word is katam. Katamaran. Right? We are lazy to improve ourselves. We are lazy to do the things that God wants to do in our life. And you know what? Laziness is the enemy of our best. You know what? In this generation, everything we want instant. Actually, God is looking for someone who is patiently and diligently working his hands and heart toward his goal. Sabi mo katabi mo, hey, wag tatamad tamad. Come on, wag tatamad tamad. I would like to share this verse to you. If you can write this down, Proverbs twenty one verse five. Proverbs twenty one verse five. It says here the plans. Of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Amen. When God repairs us, okay. I have a few more minutes here, so we're gonna go. But we're gonna go straight to our points. So when God repairs us, when God repairs you, in Nehemiah chapter three. They started to repair the walls. They started the construction of the walls. Is anybody here na kapunta na sa construction site? Or anybody here na kakita na ng construction site? So it looks like this. Pag pumunta ka don, andito yung buhangin. Usually katabi niya graba. Katabi ng graba usually mga sako ng semento, right? E pag chinek mo yung site, makakita ka ng mga alikabok, makakita ka ng phenolic boards, makakita ka ng mga pako, paglingo mo sa kabila, makakita ka ng mga kahoy. Alam mo yon. So it's a messy, messy place, construction site. But what does it mean? It means that when God repairs you, normal lang na messy? Normal lang na magulo? Normal lang na madumihan at higit sa lahat, normal lang na masaktan. And here it is. When God repairs you, here's the good news. When God repairs you, He will turn your mess into a message. When God repairs you, He will turn your mess into a message. Are you in pain? Guess what? God is repairing you. Are you confused? God is repairing you. Are you lost? God is repairing you. Are you overwhelmed with stress? Guess what? God is repairing you. Do you feel like you are unworthy? Do you feel like God abandoned you? Do you feel like God left you? Do you feel like you're all alone? You know what? God is repairing you. And actually, God is in your mess. Hindi mo lang siya nakikita because you are too distracted with the mess in your life. Your pain, your confusion, your stress, your issues, your insecurity, your doubts, and your fears. He is actually repairing you so that the mess will turn into a message. A message of hope, a message of freedom, a message of healing, a message of security, a message of confidence, and most importantly, a message of faith. And you'll ask me, why God is in my mess? Why God is in my mess? Simply, simply because He loves you. And He will do His best to fix you. To fix up all our mess, and there are times that we're thinking, you know, there's no hope, there's no chance, and there's no way God can save us into this mess. But you know what? Wait till God shows up and turn and turn the very mess you are into to a message. Genesis chapter five verse twenty. I don't know. I know you know this story. This this is Joseph saying. But as for you. You meant you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as at his day to save many people alive. So this is Joseph, 
speaking to his brothers and his family. And he's saying, and he's saying to them, hey, you know what? What you actually, kung ano yung ginawa niyo sa akin, binenta, binenta siya, yung experience niya is, alam mo, nasa prison siya. At the same time, he was tempted. And Joseph has all the reason to doubt God. He has, he has all the reason to not trust God because he's in the mess. And there are times that in our lives we're like that. We're so messed up. And daming challenges and daming issues. But you know what? God promoted Joseph. How? How? Simply. Sino nakakalam ng kwento? Yung, yung asawa ni Potiphar, she's tempting Joseph. And you know what Joseph said? How will I do this kind of evil and sin against God? You know what? What, what Joseph and Abel to be promoted, to be successful in his life. You know what he did? Your faithfulness niya kay God. That even though he feels like that God is not moving in his life, that God is not working in his life, what Joseph did is, no, I'm not gonna, you know, sin against God, but what I'm gonna do is gonna stay in his presence, obey him, and I'm gonna faithful to him. That's what Joseph did. And can I encourage you right now? What you're going through is the very key to release God's deliverance and salvation to other people. What you're going through. You know what? Your story mo ngayon, there's the other side. There are other people waiting on the other side to see the goodness of God in your life. Ano sabi do sa verse? Bakit niya nasabi na you meant it for you meant it for evil but God meant it for good to save many people alive. Pinlano ni God lahat. Inorchestrate niya lahat. And you know what sometimes God will allow us to be in the mess to repair our character. Sometimes God will allow us to be in the mess to humble us, to teach us so that yung dependence natin is wala sa sarili nating kakayanan, kundi nasa Kanya lang. Sometimes, it, 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 uh, it, God allows it na dumaan tayo sa mga pagsubok so that makita natin kung gaano siya ka-faithful, gaano siya ka-good sa life natin. So that yung mess na tinatawag mo will turn into a message. Yung story mo will be His story. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. It's awesome. Because you know what? If God will not deal Joseph that time, Joseph can be, you know, pwede siya maging arogante. Pwede siyang, alam mo yun, hindi niya natulungan yung family niya. But God allowed those repair process so that siya mismo ma-realize niya. Hindi ako ang naglagay sa position na to. It is only God. So if you're praying for a promotion, if you're praying for an increase, sometimes God will lead you to this kind of process. Sometimes will, God will lead you to this series of discouragement and pain. Sometimes God will allow you na may experience mo na walang wala ka. Sometimes God will empty you so that He can fill you. Amen? Amen? That's awesome. Second point. Alright? We've got 10 minutes. Second point. In the text, we observe that there are a lot of names. Tama ba ako? Yun yung mga names sa sobrang hirap, alam mo yun, basahin, pronounce. Some of them, you know, yung mga nabanggit na mga pangalan doon, some of them are priests, Levites, merchants, political people, and of course, regular people of Israel. And though, and these people work together to repair the wall. So our second point is, when God repairs you, he will turn your hard work into teamwork. When God repairs you, He will turn your hard work into teamwork. Here's the good news. You are not alone in this season. The repair that God is doing in your life, it's a teamwork. It's you and Him. Baka naman sobrang hirap na hirap ka na, you feel like you're doing, giving all your best because the reality is you're just doing it all by yourself. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, the message version, it says here, 
This Jesus say this, this is Jesus speaking. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you learn to live freely and lightly. Perhaps we are working hard because we are doing, doing it all, all by ourselves. Hear me out. There are things in our lives that we can do and there are things in our life that, God, that only God can do. Kung minsan kasi yung role ni God, ginagawa din natin. Kung minsan kasi yung repair na ginagawa ni God sa buhay natin, kung minsan ginagawa din natin. And there are times na frustrate tayo. And there are times na di-discourage tayo. Because no matter what we do, we keep on failing and failing and failing. But right now, God is inviting us, Hey, we can turn this hard work into teamwork. If you're going to partner with me, walk with me, and learn from me. This is a teamwork. You are not alone. You are not alone. May kumanta. Next time, kakanta rin tayo. Alright? You are not alone. The, sec- the second thing that I, w- I would like to share to you regarding on this, on this point is, the reason why you are stressed, sino rito na experience of stress? There are times that we experience stress because we carry all the burden. But here's the good news. Again, you are not alone. There are people that God has placed in your life. Your family, your friends, your e-group leaders are there to support you, to pray for you, and to equip you. Is anybody here believing that you're part of the best e-group? Come on! Hindi lang si God ang teamwork. It's also the people around you. God has placed them in your life to pray for you, to support you, to listen to you, and most importantly, to correct you. That's part of the repair process. To be corrected. To be repaired. But there are times that Si sino rito naka, alam mo yan, kanina yung illustration ko kanina, pumunta sa doktor, and sabi ng doktor, okay, ito yung, ito yung diagnosis mo, and ito yung gagawin mo. And there are times that, what we do, doc, di ko gagawin yan, kasi ito yung gusto ko. It's a teamwork, right? So kung teamwork, pag sinasabi natin teamwork, we have to honor the gifts, we have to honor the people that God has placed in our lives, so that we can live harmoniously, and we can live in breakthrough. Amen? Yeah. And I have to ask you, what kind of friend do you want in life? You know what? Not everyone, but actually, I'd rather have someone that will challenge me to go higher in life. A person who believes in me even though I don't believe myself. A person who sees my potential even though I do not I did not see my I do not see my potential. A person who prays for me and a person who corrects me. You know what the measurement of relationship? is when you're at the bottom and you see these people praying for you, supporting you. These people, you know, they are, you know, and this is napapagod to correct you. They have this patience to believe in you. Na kahit anong mesa pa nangyari sa buhay mo, they're still, hey bro, hey sis, I'm still rooting for you. I'm still believing what God has placed in your life. And you know what? I'd rather have that kind of friend. Kesa is a friend now. You know what, bro? Just do whatever you want. I don't like that kind of friend. I want a friend that who will challenge me. You know, to stretch my capacity to believe. To believe God for more. To believe God that can do, that He can do mighty things in my life. That's what kind that's kind of friend that what I want. So the first point is, when God repairs you, He will turn your mess into a message. The second one is, when God repairs you, He will turn your hard work into teamwork. And I would like to call the band to come up. The third point is, He will turn your brokenness into wholeness. 
when God repairs you, He will turn your brokenness into wholeness. If you have observed our main text, ano yung unang gate na phoenix nila? Is the sheep gate. And if you're gonna read Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 31 to 32, uh, wait, is it is it here? Can you flash? Yeah. It says here, Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 31 to 32, it says here, After him, Malakhija, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs as far as the house of Nethinim and of the merchants in front of Mipkad Gate, and as far as the upper room at the corner, and between the upper room at the corner, as far as the sheep gate, the goldsmith and the merchants made repairs. Have you observed something? At the beginning of the chapter, the sheep gate was mentioned. At the last part, at the last verse of chapter 3, the sheep gate was mentioned again. And you know what? There's a significance kung bakit pinriority nila ang sheep gate at bakit umikot ulit sila sa sheep gate. You know what, what sheep gate represents in those times? The sheep gate is where, of course, the sheep enters. This is the place where the lamb enters. And yung pagdaan nila ron, hindi lang yung parang dadaan sila, doon dinadaan yung mga sheep na gagamitin for burnt offering. But before I tackle that point, I, I, I want to share something to you. Uh, I, I read this article regarding about the sheep gate. Kung bakit yun ang first na ginawa nila. It's very encouraging. Sabi dito, repairing the sheep gate first, uh, repairing the sheep gate first shows us how important it is to set our priorities right and keep our focus. The heart of life in Jerusalem is the worship of God. By repairing the sheep gate first, Nehemiah and his team are setting the tone for the entire work. They are stating that, there's, that their first priority is the worship of God. This is a lesson for us as well. Our worship of God has to remain inside all through the work we do for Him. It must never be lost in the details no matter how complex or daunting the planning and coordination becomes. Truly, let us never neglect the worship of the Lord in our personal and corporate life. That is why nauna ayusin yung sheep gate. Because it just shows na yung priority ng Israelites that time is to worship God. Why? Because yung sheep gate na yon, yun yung gate na pinakamalapit sa temple. And we know where God's presence is that time. It's in the temple. Alright? So that's the reason kung bakit inuna nila yung sheep gate. To set priority in their lives. You know what? That God, kahit gaano ako busy sa life ko, kahit ano man yung nangyayari sa life ko, ang first priority ko sa buhay ko, is to worship you. I always do believe that a great message always, you know, we're being rebuked by this. And there are times that we have to ask ourselves, sa life ko ba, are we re- really repairing the walls of sheep gate? What, I, what do I mean? In our life, do we have this intention and heart to make God priority in our life? Are we really in the season of we're saying, God, I'm praying for breakthrough. But before that breakthrough, I want to repair the wall of worship to you. How's your worship look like? Pagandito na sa church, just raising hands, singing songs. You know what? Worship is beyond that. Worship is not just singing songs, praising Him. You know what worship, worship means is? Worship is your obedience to God. That you're putting all your effort and intention to honor Him, to please Him, and to obey Him. That is worship. In our personal life, in our work, 
in our studies, in our e-groups, in our ministry, do we really prioritize our worship to God? The second thing, kaya na sabi ko kanina, yung sheep gate na yun is daan ng mga sheep, ng mga lamb na ginagamit sa burnt offerings. And it is amazing because the, that illustration shows it's very prophetic because it shows Jesus. What do I mean? Di ba pag ino-offer yung mga lamb, yung mga sheep, anong, anong meron doon? Blood. So, kaya unang ni-repair yun so that it symbolizes Jesus' blood in our lives and, Jesus, and, God, and God's heart for humanity. Because even the very beginning, that's what God, God's heart is, to repair us, to fix us. And I'll go back to the story of Adam and Eve. You know what happened, Adam and Eve, the moment na nagkasala sila? You know what they did? Diba? They are naked and they built um, uh, clothes made in leaves. And the moment God saw them, you know what God did? He repaired them. How? All of a sudden, my lamb done, He killed it. My blood. And, then he, and from there, He made a cloth for them and He covered them. What does the leaf represent? Leaf represents, leaves represents our hard work, our capacity, our knowledge, our abilities. But you know what? Kung gusto talaga natin magpa-repair kay God, hindi yung good works natin, hindi yung talento natin, hindi yung talino natin, hindi yung kakayahan natin, ang makakapag-repair sa atin ang makakapag-repair sa atin ay wala ng iba kundi si Jesus lang. That's why I'm saying when God repairs you, He will turn your brokenness into wholeness because that's what God's heart is. After that, you know the story? Isaac and Abraham, right? God promised Abraham, hey, I will make you the father of all nations. But this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna offer your son it's just a test of faith. And when Abraham, he's, he's about to kill his son, the angel of the Lord stopped him. He said, no, 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 no. I, I show your faithfulness. This is what we're gonna do. All of a sudden, may ram na lumabas. And then they killed it. And that's what they offer to God. There is blood. Your blood na yon is God's covenant in our lives. That hey matter what broken you are, I'm here to restore you, to repair you, and to make you whole. It's not by your ability, but it's on my ability. And from then, a practice of my Israelites, when they sin, they offer you know, lamb, sheep. And there's one guy, you know, came up in the story. His name is Jesus. And as I John the Baptist, Behold, the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. So God's process for us to be repaired, Sabi nga, di ba, sheep gate, close to temple, because that's where God's presence is, presence is. But the moment Jesus came, the moment He died for us, the moment He gave His life and blood for us, he changed it because the temple is you right now and he is willing to give everything to repair you he is willing to give his blood for you to repair you i don't know about you but i love my god no matter how i'm broken he is willing to make me whole because of his blood look at the words
in a niche, the, the concept of the message is, is, is simple. God is willing and ready to repair you. And kung God is willing and ready to repair us, magpa-repair tayo. Because whatever, whatever mess you're in, He can turn it into a message. Whatever hard work, ganong pagpapakahira po sa life mo, He can turn it into a teamwork. He's ready. He's there, available for you. And you feel like you're not enough? You feel like you're broken? Jesus is saying, hey, Paano kalimutan mo, anak? I gave everything for you. That's why I built that gate. So that you'll realize kung gaano ka ka-importante sa buhay ko. Whatever brokenness you're in, you are in, you can turn it into wholeness. So when God repairs you, that when God repairs you, So right now, we've got invitation here. Number one is, for all our VIPs, if it's your first time to hear this kind of message, I want to say to you, God loves you. And Jesus loves you. And all we have to do is just be open to be repaired by God. So sa mga bisita namin, if you're that person, if, if you're saying, hey bro, I want to make a difference. I want to get repaired. I want to change my life starting right now. I know there's something in my life na alam kong hindi tama. Alam kong hindi ako nagpa-function according sa purpose and plan ni God. Bro, that's me. I'm willing. I'm ready. I'm ready to surrender everything to God. If that's you, and I would like to encourage everyone, can you please close your eyes, your heads bow down, I want to create a safe space for all, safe space for all our VIPs. You know what? This is you know this uh, loving environment that we, you can where you can show who you are. You do not need to be afraid of. We're here because we love you. We exist because we care for you. And right now, if you're that person saying, bro, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. If, if you're that person, can you please raise your hands? I really want to pray for Thank you, Jesus. Anybody here? Come on, don't be shy. Come on. There's one over there. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, don't be shy. This is a safe space for you. Come on. Jesus is ready to repair you. Come on. No matter what you've done, Wherever, where are you from? God is willing to repair you. Anybody here? Anybody here? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, this is the first invitation. The second invitation is this. This is for everyone. This is for all of us. If you're in the season right now that you're believing for breakthrough, and you know your heart, mo, your life mo is not aligned with God, God is saying right now, Hey, I'm here to repair you. Because I love you. Can you surrender every thoughts, every worries, every anxiety, every fear that pulls you down? Hey, can you surrender it to me? Is that you? Come on, can you raise your hands? I want to pray for you. Come on, don't be shy. Come on. I love it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There are people raising their hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. In the Bible, if you're going to read it, there's always a response. In John 3.16, John 3.16, it says there, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. That His, that His response. Because I love you, my response is to give my child. And right now, God is inviting us, Hey, this is what you're going to, this is your response to me. I want you to move out from your seats and go here in the altar and I want to pray for you. Come on, if that's your response, come on, I want to invite you There's an open altar here. Come on, don't be shy. I want to pray for you. Come on, there's one of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, my heart, now and forever. Come on. 
VIPs, I want to invite you to this prayer of acceptance. And I just repeat after me. Are you ready? Just repeat after me. Jesus, come on a bit louder. Jesus, I love you. And thank you for loving me. Jesus, I am ready to get repaired, to be repaired, to be fixed by you. I'm surrendering everything, my all, my heart, my life to you. Today, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Help me, teach me, anoint me, protect me, guide me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then, come on, can we give clap of praise in this place? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. 